in-season, classic, EU, non-EU, it doesn't really matter what way you're looking to try and play Soria going forward. The Challenger region with the clubs and leagues that are contained in it have this magnetic power to pull players from all other regions in the world into it, as well as it is a huge talent factory for feeding every other region in world football. In the video today, I'm going to be looking at the top things you need to know if you're playing Challenger or you're not playing Challenger, because either way, you're going to need to know. At any point in the video, if you laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please do like and subscribe to the channel don't forget to like share and retweet and all that good stuff guys jump into the comment section on this one and let me know what your thoughts and feelings were maybe before thinking about some of the stuff we chat about in the video today i look forward to catching the comment section on this one and uh, yeah let's just get stuck straight into it one of the most overlooked details about the new format is the undeniable synergy that challengers is going to have with under 23s particularly in the european calendar that probably no other region can offer to the same degree of certainty or regularity. If we look at the leagues that are actually in Challenger Europe, Portugal, Belgium, Holland, the English Championship and Denmark, these five divisions more often than not house nine out of ten of the best up-and-coming prospects in European football who haven't made it already into the big five leagues. So whether you're playing under 23 as a kind of side uh, kind of venture or whatever, or if you're trying to play a region that can help you build up a bit of an under 23 footprint, then Challenger is the number one companion competition for me for Challenger. Obviously, I'm mainly thinking about the academies that breed a lot of young rookie cards and players that will get little domestic loans and all the rest of it. But probably the most overlooked part of those leagues in that kind of dynamic is the English Championship because the amount of players that go into those leagues there's 24 clubs. We've seen it time and time again already on Soria. You can go through the championship table now and a significant number of clubs have a card or two at least. And some of them are pretty prolific with the old Soria scout in <laughs> Coventry. Some of them are licensed. We do get teams relegated from the Premier League, etc. But that league is absolutely phenomenal for getting loans in from the Premier League in particular, but around Champion Europe and even around the, the rest of the Challenger region in that attempt to claim the league, win the championship, which has got a significant amount of fixtures to get them promoted ultimately to the Premier League where they're probably not going to do as good, obviously. Because I think it's going to be really hard for people to just play one division and have all their ducks in a row, have their gallery nice and neat and tidy and operate in the best way possible without getting that opportunity to... Uh, you know, have another region kind of ticking away and maybe it's just, you know, maybe the fixtures line up for you once in a while and that's your kind of, your secondary priority. I think that's just going to unfold more and more often. A lot of people will look at under 23s, but under 23s is going to be a bit of a snakes and ladders kind of situation where the reason they're getting good access in under 23 is because they're maybe playing in the Challenger region as well. And maybe you don't have an under 23 goalkeeper, but maybe you have a Belgium stack up touch stack that complements maybe a team in the Premier League or La Liga or something like that and you're waiting for those players to come out of the academy and kind of go out on loan into Portugal, into Holland itself, Turkey, whatever it might be, get those minutes, blend in with the other cheaper kind of collection you've got on the go in Challenger and as I say, I think Challenger is the ultimate kind of companion region for under 23s in any way, even if it is like where can I play and where can I find under 23s? quite cheaply, organically, guys that will just get minutes and come through different academies because looking at Belgium, Holland and Portugal, the top teams, and in Holland you can really extend that to the top half of the division. If you look at their transfers in and out over the last five or six years, every one of them have got a quality player come through their door at some point. So if you can really keep your ear to the ground, there's a lot of high value, a lot of high upside scouting to be had in this region. And if that's a big part of the driver that you play so rare for, then challengers, is definitely something that you can't really take out of your equation if you're having any sort of 23 component into your club. Now, in the video I did a few weeks ago, the top three things all Soria scouts and managers need to know. I spoke about the key elements of the new changes that everyone needs to get their head around or have an understanding of between now and August. If you missed that video, I'll link it at the end of this one so you can watch it and get up to speed. But looking at challengers in a lot more detail, we, like we covered in that video, I'm sure as well, but MLS and Turkey is one of the most OP combinations to build your gallery around to absolutely cover the calendar. But absolutely covering the calendar for 12 months isn't the be all and end all. It's not for everyone either. But that opens up the Challengers region to be open 12 months a year, which is more than can be said for the Champion region. And with the prize pool, the payouts and all the rest of it associated, 
you know, challengers is ranked firmly ahead of contenders. I say firmly, you know, but there is a difference there for what it is. Then really, no matter what your starting point is with this region, whether you just want to maybe play MLS and that covers maybe European cards you own already, or you use Turkey for the vice versa, it doesn't really matter. But because it is open 12 months a year and it will have access to some of the most exciting emerging talent really around world football. And when you look at Brazil and MLS, you can really include all corners of the earth because the amount of talent in South America that does now go to MLS as well as Brazil being, you know, the most um, high value, the most, I think that, you know, the Brazilian clubs have got the most money in South America, whatever the best way is of saying that. So if Challengers is a region that you're going to be playing like natively, it's part of maybe what your club's been all about already, or it's about where you've been moving your club into, because maybe you see a bit of an opportunity. Because a lot of these better clubs as well will play midweeks in the Europa League and the Conference League. And, you know, if you can pick the right situation of a uh, of a Genk or a 20 or whoever else it might be, Anderlecht once in a while, who knows, then those cards will get success. And that will mean winning cards, and that will mean winning other cards in that region that maybe don't quite fit in with with what you've got there. So at some stage, you will be confronted with the option of playing longer in the season or in the calendar than maybe was, you know, first imagined when you put your strategy together. I think challenger managers that have really got their ducks in a row when the new classic and in-season mode is fully unveiled and we can really get our teeth into it and see it, I think they'll be the ones that will be best set up to think about playing every game week and, you know, working their club and their gallery and their calendar out, you know, much more over a calendar basis rather than the seasonality of the European season beginning and all that kind of stuff. But for me, one of the most exciting opportunities that the new Challengers region is going to bring is the ultimate relegation lover situation because of all the focus, all the attention, and really all the hype and the money going towards the Premier League and the Champion Europe in-season competitions, any teams that get relegated from the Premier League into the English Championship and become a challenger collection, a challenger team for the following season are definitely going to see a sharp decline in prices. But like we've seen this year, which is, you know, relatively textbook, relegated teams don't always take the championship by storm. But we've seen Leicester, we've seen Southampton, we've seen Leeds. These teams do very, very well their first season relegated. Doesn't always happen for everyone. There is players that get lost down to relegation, transfer release clauses, and you know contracts expire, managers change. These, there, you know, there's some messy stuff that happens there. But getting parachuted into a division where you're going to have 42 matches, probably one of the most OP squads really in the region for the European calendar, that will then potentially have the springboard effect of becoming a champion team the following season. That's maybe a bit of a long scope for uh, a lot of managers, which I get. But the longer you play so rare, the longer your scope becomes and the longer you need to think about the decisions you're making, the clubs you're selecting, the teams you're backing. And I think like if you've got a Bundesliga, a La Liga team, etc., when those teams do relegate from there and they go into contenders, that's definitely not the same as dropping into challengers and winning Eredivisie players, Belgian League players, MLS players. These are high value, high quality, high caliber cards that your relegated cards could be picking up for you versus like, hey, I'm going to be a bit of a contender, you know, champion, as it were, you know, for for the foreseeable future, it would seem. But the quality of random card you're going to get in there is going to be nothing in comparison to the challenger region, even if we're thinking about classic mode only. So I do think if you are trying to just live in champions, you will be best served again to be thinking about that, you know, ultimate kind of trapdoor that we've got with the challenger region with, you know, the English championship. Because again, like, if you do have some sort of a presence in champion Europe to kind of tie this into some of the earlier points, like, you just need to look at Liverpool. What's the guy's name? Carvalho. He went on loan to Hull. Get Nat Phillips at Cardiff. You know, there's things like that that happen with a lot of the different Premier League clubs. You're kind of crossing your fingers most of the time it's a young talent. Like, if you roll back the years, Tammy Abrahams and Mason Mounts and... You know, these types of guys that, you know, got a lot of pedigree, big international profile, but they get minutes down in that division and cut their teeth. And I know these guys went to Holland, which again is another challenger region. Not Abraham, but you know what I mean. The challenger region is not one I want to be participating in. It's not one I am going to be building a gallery or whatever around. But as I look at my club, the way it sits now, I've got half of a team. I've even got a goalkeeper now from a DNP rewards. Daniel Backman looks to have got the gloves back for the time being anyway at Watford. So it's definitely something that I'm confronted with. And it is the reality of this is a division where for someone like me who thinks that for the division, for the competitions, I'm going to be taken seriously. I want three entries of similar quality and standard. I definitely am not going to be there with the challenger region. But for me, and I think for all, it would be ridiculous to totally write it off and totally cut it out of your life because you will have cards that will float around there, maybe for six months or a season. 
Maybe you still want to use them. Maybe that improves our situation. You've got the under 23 blend in that we spoke about. We've got the maximum calendar utilization and we've got the ultimate relegation lover. It really does have a region that the avid sore air manager has a lot to expose there and has a lot of edges to sharpen. If you didn't catch that video, uh, top three things all sore air managers need to know, that's on screen now for you as well as maybe one or two other videos that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. I did. I hope you did enjoy this one. Please do subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Hit the like button and get into the comment section and let me know what you thought. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.